If your engine feels sluggish, your fuel economy is dropping, or your idle isn't as smooth as it used to be, you've probably been told this. You need a chemical carbon cleaning. That advice has quietly destroyed thousands of perfectly good engines. Not over years, not slowly, but suddenly, after one professional service that sounded safe. Here's the part almost no one tells you. Japanese manufacturers solved engine carbon buildup decades ago, without chemicals without pouring anything into the engine, and without risking catastrophic damage. Today I'm going to show you the Japanese carbon removal trick that requires no chemicals, is backed by longtime Japanese engine design philosophy, is still quietly recommended by master technicians, and can extend engine life past 200,000 miles if done correctly. Stay until the very end, because the final step is where most people get this completely wrong. And that mistake brings carbon back worse than before. Why carbon buildup is a modern engine problem, not a maintenance failure. Let's start with an uncomfortable truth. Carbon buildup is not happening because you're lazy or careless. It's happening because modern engines are designed for better fuel economy, lower emissions, higher efficiency. That comes with trade-offs. Modern engines use gasoline direct injection, GDI, aggressive PCV systems, exhaust gas recirculation, EGR. Older engines sprayed fuel over the intake valves. That gasoline naturally washed carbon away. Modern engines don't. Fuel goes straight into the combustion chamber. The intake valves stay dry. Oil vapor and exhaust residue stick to hot metal. That's how carbon forms. And this is where most advice goes wrong. Why chemical carbon cleaning is so risky. Before we talk about the Japanese method, we need to talk about what not to do. Pour in carbon cleaners, spray cleaners, and miracle additives are dangerous because liquids don't distribute evenly. Engines don't compress liquid. Carbon breaks loose in chunks. Debris can damage valves, pistons, and turbos. Hydrolock, vent valves, melted catalytic converters. These failures are common enough that many Japanese manufacturers explicitly avoid chemical intake cleaning in their service philosophy. Instead, they focus on prevention, airflow, and operating conditions. And that leads us to the trick, the Japanese philosophy behind carbon control. Japanese engine design follows a very different mindset compared to quick-fix Western services. The philosophy is simple. Carbon should be managed continuously, not attacked aggressively. Instead of dissolving carbon chemically, Japanese engineers focus on combustion temperature stability, airflow balance, oil vapor control, engine operating behavior. The result is a method that slowly removes soft carbon, prevents hard deposits from forming, does not shock the engine, and most importantly, it does not introduce liquid into the intake. The Japanese trick. Overview. No shortcuts. This method is often misunderstood, so let's be clear up front. This is not pouring cleaner into the intake, spraying anything into the throttle body, revving the engine aggressively, Italian tune-ups done randomly. The Japanese trick relies on controlled heat, airflow, and time. And yes, it takes patience. That's why it works. Step 1. Full engine warm-up. This is non-negotiable. Japanese technicians are obsessive about one thing, engine temperature. Carbon behaves very differently at different temperatures. A partially warmed engine loosens carbon unevenly, causes flakes to break off, increases risk of damage. A fully warmed engine softens light carbon gradually, allows deposits to burn off cleanly, protects tight tolerance components. This means coolant fully at operating temperature, oil fully warmed, not just the gauge. Short trips do not count. This is why carbon buildup is worse on city-driven vehicles, short commute cars, engines that rarely see full warm-up. Step two, controlled load driving, not aggressive revving. Here's where most people mess this up. The Japanese method does not involve flooring the throttle, bouncing off red line, sudden RPM spikes. Instead, it uses sustained moderate engine load, stable RPM ranges, Continuous airflow. Think highway driving, light uphill grades, consistent throttle input. This creates stable combustion temperatures, gradual carbon softening, clean burn off without shock. Random hard revs do the opposite. They break carbon loose violently. Why this works, the science most videos skip. 
Carbon buildup exists in layers. Soft, oily carbon. Hardened bake deposits. The Japanese method targets soft carbon first by raising combustion temperature gradually, maintaining airflow, avoiding liquid introduction. Soft deposits burn off naturally. Hard deposits stop growing. Over time, the engine stabilizes. This is why Japanese engines are known for longevity, smooth operation at high mileage, lower catastrophic failure rates. It's not magic, it's restraint. The mistake that ruins this method. Here's where most people sabotage the process. They try to speed it up. They add chemicals to help. Rev harder than necessary. Skip warm up. Don't maintain the routine. That turns a safe method into a risky one. Carbon control is not a one-time event. It's a habit. Why shops rarely talk about this? Because it doesn't sell services. No expensive chemicals. No dramatic before and after. No fast turnaround. But long-time Japanese technicians quietly recommend this approach because it protects engines. It reduces warranty claims. It keeps vehicles running longer. And that brings us to the most important part. The exact Japanese driving pattern. This is the part most people miss. Now let's get specific. Japanese master technicians don't just say drive it on the highway. They follow a very specific pattern. And this is where the carbon removal actually happens. Here's the method, exactly as it's practiced. Engine fully warmed up. Transmission in a stable gear. No constant hunting. RPM held in the 2,500 to 3,500 RPM range. Steady throttle, not aggressive. Continuous driving for 20 to 30 minutes. No red line, no sudden throttle stabs. No stop and go. This creates stable combustion temperature, consistent airflow across valves, controlled burn off of soft carbon. This is not abuse. This is how Japanese engines are designed to operate. Many engines never experience this in daily city driving, which is why carbon builds up in the first place. Why RPM matters more than speed. This is where a lot of advice online goes wrong. People focus on vehicle speed. Japanese technicians focus on engine load and RPM. You can drive 70 miles per hour at 1,800 RPM and remove nothing. 55 miles per hour at 3,000 RPM and clean carbon effectively. Carbon responds to combustion conditions, not speed. That's why this method works even in countries with lower highway speeds. How often this trick should be done. This is not a one-time fix. Japanese maintenance philosophy is about prevention, not repair. Recommended frequency. Once every 1,000 to 1,500 miles for city-driven cars. Once a month for short trip vehicles. Before oil changes on high mileage engines. When done regularly, soft carbon never hardens. Intake valves stay cleaner longer. Piston ring sticking is reduced. Skip it long enough and carbon hardens beyond what this method can fix. The one maintenance part that determines if this works. This is critical and most videos never mention it. The entire method fails if this part is neglected. The PCV valve. A failing PCV valve dumps excessive oil vapor into the intake, overwhelms the engine during this process, rebuilds carbon as fast as it's burned off. Japanese technicians replace PCV valves far more often than Western schedules suggest. Typical interval, every 40,000 to 60,000 miles. Earlier on turbo or GDI engines, cost $10 to $30. Impact, massive reduction in carbon formation. This single part determines whether the chemical-free method works or fails. When this method will not work, be honest with yourself. This trick is powerful, but it's not magic. It will not work if the engine already has heavy, rock-hard carbon. Misfires are already present. Check engine lights are active. Compression is uneven. At that point, carbon is structural. Physical cleaning methods are required. Trying to force this method on a severely neglected engine can. Break carbon loose in chunks. Cause misfires. Damage valves. Knowing when not to do this is part of being smart. How to tell. If your engine is a good candidate, here are the signs this method works best. Rough idle, only when cold. Slight loss of fuel economy. Hesitation at light throttle. No misfire codes. No loud mechanical noises. 
If your engine runs smoothly at high RPM, has no warning lights, just feels tired, this method is ideal. Why Japanese engines are famous for longevity. This is the bigger picture. Japanese reliability doesn't come from magic metals. It comes from conservative engine tuning, heat management, maintenance habits that prevent buildup, avoiding aggressive chemical shortcuts. Carbon control is part of a system, not a service. That's why many Japanese vehicles reach 200,000 miles, 300,000 miles with original engines. Not because carbon was removed once, but because it was never allowed to become destructive. The hidden bonus most drivers don't expect. When this method is done correctly and consistently, drivers often notice smoother idle, quieter operation, improved throttle response, slight MPG improvement. Not because carbon vanished overnight, but because combustion stabilized. Engines like consistency. The final mistake that brings carbon back worse than before. This is the last warning. Many people do this method once. Then go back to short trips, gentle driving only, long oil change intervals. That accelerates carbon formation. Carbon control only works when driving habits support it. Maintenance supports it. You can't undo years of buildup in one drive, but you can stop it from getting worse. Final reality check. There is no miracle carbon cleaner. There is no safe shortcut. The Japanese trick works because it respects engine design, uses physics, not chemicals, avoids sudden shock, treats carbon as a process, not a problem. Drivers who understand this avoid risky services, extend engine life, save thousands in repairs. Drivers who chase shortcuts learn the hard way. Be honest. When was the last time your engine saw 20 to 30 minutes of steady, fully warmed highway driving? This week, this month, I can't remember. Comment below. Your answer says more about your engine's future than you think. If this helped you, share it with another car owner.